Hello everyone, my name is Allison Gonzalez, I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer here at Pragmatic Works, and today in this next episode of my report design series, we are talking about making a theme for your Power BI report. So last episode, we talked all about color theory and using that to create an amazing color palette to a bunch of different sites where you can get those generated for you. Now what we're gonna do is take a color palette we've chosen into the Power BI desktop to make a theme. We're also gonna check out the existing themes that you're just easily able to click and use that are all set up for you inside of the Power BI desktop, including the new accessible ones that were added in that February 2023 release. So let's take a look. Right, so here we are. I'm on one of my favorite color palette picker sites, which is Coolers. It is a really cool one to use and it's very simple to use as well. So essentially every time you want to get a new color, you can just hit the space bar. So this is when I first went on the page, this is a color combo. If I'm not really feeling this, not really what I'm looking for. If I hit the space bar, then we get another one. I'm really feeling this kind of Mardi Gras vibe that's happening. Can go with another one and I can kind of keep going until I like one. Now, if you do like a color and you're like, you know what, I really want to use this shade on here, you can always lock that. So there's a little lock icon right over my shoulder right here. So I could click on this lock icon and that would keep the color I like. And then when I hit the space bar again, it would keep that color, but change everything else and make sure that all of the colors that it chose work well with that one. Again, you kind of keep going, keep doing that. Ooh, not a fan, keep going until you get one that you like. Once you have one that you like, these are all of your hex codes right here. So this number, letter combo right here, this is what you're gonna be copying putting in to Power BI to create your theme. Now in Power BI, when you're making a theme, you have eight shades to choose from. So for some of these, we can go lighter or darker to kind of have something in the same feel of what we're going for, just a little bit lighter, or darker to go with that. Or we can also, of course, add in white, black, or a neutral gray or another neutral that would fit the colors we have going on in here. So pick your colors from your color palette. Again, we talked more about this in our last episode. If you did not watch that one, definitely go take the time to go and see that. Talk color theory, take the Allison's Art School for that. And then have a bunch of other links in that video so that way you are able to kind of choose a color palette site you like the best definitely play around, experiment with them to find one. All right, let's take our color palette, take it into Power BI, and we're gonna look at those existing themes we can choose from, and also put this one into a theme of our own. All right, I am over here now in Power BI, and I just have this report cram full of visuals. That way we can kind of navigate through the pages and just see how these color changes affect all of these different visual types. So I'm currently over here on my view ribbon and this first section right here is themes. So you can go ahead, hit that drop down, and you're gonna be able to see all of the themes that Power BI comes preloaded with. Now in the February 2023 release, we have this new accessible themes section. Now this is great because this is making sure that if there's any vision differences, that these themes will make sure that none of the colors placed next to each other could really be confused or seen as a different color, really all distinct enough that when placed on all of these different visuals, it's gonna be clear which is which. So let's take a look, see what they look like, see how they change. You can see all of these different color variations on our play axis now. We've got lots going on. We've got a brighter shade on the map, orange and blue. 
remember across from each other on the color palette so when placed next to each other they make each other seem brighter let's take a look at some of the other accessible themes this is a more muted palette We've got kind of that gold and blue and green remember blue is a primary color so is yellow and green is a secondary color that we get from mixing blue and yellow together and if you hover over you can see these each have names next we have title which is keeping things a little bit more blue coastal vibes here and we have neutral again very neutral some browns very beige gray colors there's also if we clicked ahead to the purple one this one right here which has some like plum shade and a lighter purple pink almost and then kind of almost a dark blue and navy here going in so if any of those fit great go ahead and use these pre-defined ones especially those accessible themes to make sure that it's going to work for everyone in your organization there is also a colorblind safe one right here that is always good to include in that conversation. And the colorblind safe one looks like this. So fun, more of a pink teal, light teal, dark teal combo going on in here. Now we've got lots of other the default themes in here that you are able to choose from. So if you want something a little bit more monotone, keeping all of the same color together, you can see this is a nice yellow to pink combo that is in here pretty bright these are really great ones to use so they're all set up ready to go now if you want to make your own if you're like uh this is great i want to shake it up a little bit i want to have my own specific color palette or perhaps you pulled the colors from like your company things like that then in that case, all you have to do is click again on that drop down, go to that customize current theme. Whatever theme you're on is gonna be your starting point. Now, of course, you can use it to make some little modifications or you can use that to fully just scrap it all and redesign your own, which is what we can do for ours to set those colors that we got from our color palette into a theme. So I'm gonna go with a customized current theme. When I do, you're gonna get this pop-up and you can name it right here. We're gonna call this New Awesome. And then you're able to change each of these, again, eight colors that are kind of the default colors here. It's always good when you're in here to kind of pay attention to how these colors are changing and where they're working. So I'm able to see, all right, so color one, color two, color three, and so on. And the same for down here. I've got color one, I've got color two, and color three. So you can see the colors that are really gonna by default be next to each other. Of course, I can go through and change visual by visual what color is next to what color if I want to do that. But always best when you're thinking of your setup, the colors that are right next to each other, are probably gonna show up next to each other in the visual as well. So going through, and I'm just gonna grab those hex codes, which again, on my color palette, I have these hex codes right here that I can easily copy and then paste in. So we're gonna grab each of those, place those in. All right, so now all of the colors are in the same color palette, they're all going to flow, work well together. If I wanted, I could also change these negative, positive, and neutrals from the default, as well as these divergent colors if I am using those. Always a good thing to change. Now, I tend to think of when I'm putting my divergent colors in, if I have a max, is that max good or bad? Because then I would technically, if I'm doing you know, a red or a green, I would want the bad to be red. I would want it to be eye-catching because you would want to notice if something is going poorly. So consider that when you are doing that, you wanna make sure your max, your middle, and your min are all distinct colors, whether that's one's really dark, one's really light. You may not need middles. It really all depends on your colors that you are going for in here. These, I'm gonna go ahead and get this blue and I'm just gonna make this a brighter version of the blue for my max. And I'm gonna make 
the pink to be my minimum here. And I'm again also gonna pick a brighter version of that color. And in the middle, I'm just gonna go with white. So white's hex code is six Fs. Really easy to type in anytime you need um, a white shade somewhere. So it's gonna be six Fs for you. Or just drag that color picker to the middle. Next up, there is an advanced area where you can always change things in here if you wanna get super technical. I'm gonna go over change my text. Now I'm a bit of a font snob, so there's not as many as I would love to see in here, but there are some pretty good options for what you can do. Mainly what you wanna be concerned about when you are setting your fonts in a Power BI report is legibility. So this is gonna be read on a screen. So you have to keep that in mind. A lot of times a serif font, so that is a font with feet, like the Arial Unicode or Times New Roman, those have the little feet on them. Those are a little bit harder to read on a screen. There's kind of sometimes better print fonts a lot of the time, unless it's a really large thing, but really teeny tiny, I would suggest against making those a serif font, or the little fonts with the feet, make those instead a sans serif. Even if you wanna go something basic like Arial, get a little bit more different with one of the other sans serifs. But again, stay away from the serif fonts anytime you have really small text because it's gonna be harder to read. We want legibility to be really good for our reports. So you can go ahead, play around, change your fonts, see which ones you like, see how that changes the feel of your report. Now, I would love if there was a live change that could happen. Maybe hopefully that's an update Microsoft can do in the future. I would love if as I'm changing it in this preview window, I would also see kind of the change happening in real time to my report. A lot of times I'll make a report, I'll be in this window, I'm like, this is gonna look amazing. And then I hit apply and all of a sudden it looks like an Easter basket threw up all over my report. And I just wasn't anticipating certain colors being next to each other or just, it's not working out the way I thought. So I will give you a warning. A lot of times when you're building a theme, you might not get it on your first try and that's okay. Go back in, you can modify it, customize it as many times as you need to really tweak it to get it exactly working well and how you want. So you can always go ahead, grab whatever font you like, change it around as much as you would need to. You can also adjust your font size, our general text. You can change your font color if you would like to. Same with your titles. If you wanna change those title font again, Good rule of thumb when you're working with fonts is that probably keep it two fonts max. Three, maybe, really depending on things, but try to keep it really unified with your fonts. It's also really where it works well to have like a serif and a sans serif. Maybe for your larger headings, you do have a serif font or the fonts with the feet. That's, since it's larger, a little bit easier to read it. And then you have that sans serif for all of your like smaller text elements on your page. So you can really have a good font combo. Again, I would probably stick with two. Keep it simple. You don't really need to have a ton of fonts on here. Again, you can also choose the same font for your general text and for your title text. That is totally fine. One's just gonna be larger, potentially bolded, slightly different color, so it stands out against your regular text. But I would say max of two, kind of pushing it if you're trying to get three in there, like if you wanted to have your cards and KPIs have a different font or your tab headers. Again, I would probably stick with, if you're setting things, two max would be a good practice. For your visuals, now when you're thinking of your report design, we have our visuals sitting on our page, our report, and that report also has a background behind it. So you really have three layers of backgrounds that you're able to implement when you're doing your theme. Now in this customized theme window, you're not able to upload an, a background image. You can only pick colors for your backgrounds here. Next episode, I'm gonna to talk to you about how you're able to make an image background. So if you want to use something other than a color, whether that's a picture, a texture, just if you like, want it to be like a gradient, 
anything like that, I'm going to talk to you next episode about how to do that. All right, let's choose a background for our visuals. As soon as I pick my color, you can see I can have any of these colors. Now what I like to do, I want to make sure that everything is flowing. I'm using the same colors. So if I want a background color on my visuals, and of course you don't need to. If I don't want my background on my visuals, I can turn my transparency right here up to 100 and I don't get a background. Like nothing will show up. So if you don't want a background behind this visual, go ahead, bump that transparency all the way up and then by default it will essentially be off. If you do, head back over to your names and colors, grab one of these colors just to make sure that everything, every color you're choosing is in that same color palette. So let's say if I'm gonna pick this light blue for my visual background, and I can drop that right in here. And again, if I wanna go even lighter than this, I tend to like my backgrounds to not be incredibly prominent behind the visual. I can even just go lighter and I know that I'm staying in that same family of colors right here. Once we have our color set, then it is on to doing our page settings. So you can also on your background set your border, you can set a header, you can also set a tool tip in here as well. Once you set your page background, this is where you have two areas. You have your wallpaper and you also have your page background area. If you are setting your wallpaper, this is the area behind the report. So mine's all the way zoomed in so I don't see any of that blank space. But if you don't want that blank space showing, you can always again, pick another color for that wallpaper. You can go back to your color section, choose which one you would want to show up around there. So if you're showing your report on a really big screen, maybe you don't want some just look like it's floating in white, you want it to look integrated, you can do that. And then your page background, this is actually the report. This is the area behind all of your visuals that you see. And again, if you want to do that, drop that color in and I'm just going to go a little bit lighter there so there's some distinction. You can also include your filter pane. So if I want my filter pane to look really included, I can always change that color. If I want to encourage people to use that filter pane, I can do that as well. I'm gonna change my font color to white since that's a little darker background. And now we hit apply and this is always a moment of truth. So we see how it looks. And I can see there's some areas I would probably want to adjust, but overall I can see how those colors play together and work. All right, so that is adding a theme into your Power BI report. Definitely play around with it. Go watch our episode last time to see how to pick a color palette if you have not done that already. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode where we will create our own image backgrounds. <laughs>